Hello, everybody. It's Dave. Oh, my lights aren't on. Oh, my gosh. Can you believe this? My lights aren't on. There it is. Hello, everybody. It's Dave Neal. We're doing this live Bachelor Nation News correspondent here to the Clayton Eckerd paternity scandal. Uh, we're going to have to rename this to the Jane Doe hoaxed the hell out of him paternity scandal. Uh, she's no longer pregnant, according to her. He believes she never was. Well, guess what? Breaking news. No, okay, this isn't confirmed by anybody, including the court, but it looks like we're going to trial. That's right, folks. Sometimes, as I've been, uh, I've had it explained to me from officials in Maricopa County, you guys, I never knew as a stand-up comedian from Rhode Island that I would have so many connections to the Maricopa County law system here. But as it turns out, the uh, minutes, as they're reported in the courtroom, don't always line up with, uh, uh, you know, uh, the motion responses by the judge. So we have yet to see the judge dismissing Janeth Dodo Bird's uh, motion to dismiss this case. But what we do see is that a trial has been set for February 27th, 2024. I mean, I kind of feel like I have to be at Maricopa County uh, reporting on this. Maybe, maybe I can hire one of you guys to wait by the courtroom. You know, they'll run out of the court with a note uh, to read the verdict. And what's going to happen is there'll be a bench trial. Bench trial refers to the type of trial that does not involve a jury. I would prefer a jury because I trust that if you give me a dozen people, I don't care their race, origin, as long as they can hear the facts of this case. I believe 100% of them will side with Clayton. Now, what's very interesting is the motion in the ocean, the metaphorical legal ocean, that is, the, uh, the, the, the changing of tides, to use a, uh, a, a seaman's metaphor. Oh boy, that's a weird pun. I meant semen as in the people that work on the ocean, not the thing lost. Okay, you get the point. Uh, <laughs> blowjob, baby. All right. It's, uh, hey, I'm not on trial yet. Um, although my, my case, I, I've got no updates on my case. Again, I've, uh, if anyone, if any airlines want to sponsor me, I would like to buy refundable tickets. A good Samaritan told me that Delta has a pretty generous refunding policy, but that's because I believe the day before my court case, or maybe even the day of Jane Dodo Bird III will not be there. I don't recommend she uh, practice poor policy like that. I'm sure her counsel would recommend that if she is going to dismiss her trial, she'll, she'll give me enough time here. You know, I, you know I'd like, I'd li I, I would like for my own family's sake to um, not have to fly to Los Angeles if not needed. Will Clayton be flying to the courtroom on February 27th? It appears so. So, my again, we don't have it in the court record yet that the judge denied her motion, but let's find out her motion here. So here is the petitioner's reply in support of motion to dismiss. So we already saw that we had um, we already saw that we had uh, um, Clayton say, no, we want this to go through. And then Jane Doe's side was like, why are you trying to clog up the legal system? And it's like, well, because you literally took a shit all over the legal system. So now we're going to use a plunger and spend a little bit of time clearing these pipes. Petitioner Jane Dodo asked, and again, I might have shared this with you. And you're wondering, is this big information? Well, I'll tell you this. A lot of people have been asking, like, hey, Dave, what's going on with the uh, deposition? She was supposed to be deposed yesterday. It was deposition Wednesday. It was a big deal. All I can say is this. Patreon eats first. I will give uh, my audience as much information as it comes, but I am involved in a chat room on the Patreon where I am going to provide, as soon as I upload this video, all updated information. There isn't much to say yet, but sometimes, as they say, silence is deafening. And there probably is more to the story, cue the X-Files music, than we know right now. My guess is that information will come out very soon, as it always does when it comes to this case. Uh, you can't keep a secret too long here. 
All right, so here's what the petitioner said. This is a paternity establishment case. Petitioner is no longer pregnant with respondent's child. There is nothing left to adjudicate. And again, we are stuck between a rock and a hard place here because on one end, that's true. There's nothing to adjudicate as far as who the daddy is because there is no daddy. What there is to adjudicate is, was she ever pregnant? And Clayton deserves to know why she lost the baby if she did. And if she didn't lose the baby, what the, or babies, what the hell happened to them? These are things that a father should have the right to know. Uh, so she also says the court does have jurisdiction to hear a paternity establishment case that does not involve minor children. The family court should keep the case open to allow respondent to seek sanctions. Well, that's what Clayton side said. As further explained below, these three arguments are insufficient to deny petitioner's motion to dismiss her own established petition. Oh my gosh, this is so confusing. All right, so let's go on to the next page here. Um, Here's the legal argument they're using. This is a paternity establishment case. Petitioner is no longer pregnant. Okay, again, there's a lot of redundancy here. That's how it works in the court system. This crucial fact is undisputed by both sides. All right, they've come to the agreement that she is not pregnant. In his August 21st, 2023 response to the petition to establish, respondent clearly stated that he believed the entire petition is made up and that he denied paternity. Response at 3-4, he requested that the court issue an order declaring that he is not the natural father of the alleged minor children. Similarly, in his proposed amended response filed as Exhibit A to his December 12th motion for leave to amend his response, respondent asked his court to issue an order declaring that respondent is not the natural father. So what, so what Clayton wants more than anything here, uh, Clayton wants the world to know that the court system rules that he was not, is not, and never was the father of her unborn babies. And of course, as we've mentioned ad nauseum, she wants this all to just go away. As we have reported yesterday, a lady who faked pregnancy and miscarriage and stillbirth um, is in jail. I mean, she's in jail. You know, she's, she, she faced something like 50 counts. Yeah, did you hear this story? Yeah, so the Doula Association uh, came together and said this is absolutely wrong. It discredits, you know, doulas are there to provide care for pregnant women and also recently pregnant women. And for somebody in that, in that other case to lie about that for whatever reason, you know, maybe they you didn't get hugged enough as a child and now they just love the praise they get from the people. I mean, talk about weaponizing and taking advantage of good-hearted people. Well, we're not going to let that happen here. We're not. The court does not have jurisdiction to resolve a paternity establishment matter that does not involve minor children. So really what it comes down to is the judge, in my opinion, dismissed the petitioner's claim. And that's why there's an evidentiary hearing. Um, again, we don't know why the hearing showed up before the judge's dismissal. But I guess I would think that in the next couple of days, we're going to see that dismissal. Maybe it's because the dismissal takes some time. Again, I have no idea. I might sound so dumb right now. Maybe the judge has to write a summary as to why they're um, uh, you know, not uh, going to let this case be dismissed. My guess is the judge is as curious as the audience is to see how this plays out. Again, I know judges probably shouldn't be making uh, decisions on the bench based on curiosity, but if it's a coin flip about whether or not you dismiss or keep going, hmm, I think that coin flips to the side of truth, which is let's subpoena for some records. Let's get the deposition done. Now, as I reported, I kind of vaguely, I don't know if I reported this on YouTube, but Clayton, now that Janie Doey has a new lawyer, Clayton is set to be deposed. What does this mean? Well, there's two types of depositions. You can, and, and I've had the first kind, which is where you essentially have what's like a stenographer, a court reporter. They come in with their little do 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 do, and then they just they transcribe everything that you say. You know, it's basically like an extended cross examination. Now, in my humble opinion, how a deposition works is you, as the opposing counsel, can ask 
uh, any number of questions. It doesn't mean that the judge will allow that line of questioning in trial, but it's kind of, again, let me know in the comment section. We have a lot of lawyers out here that know more than my public school education, but it seems as though it's a way for like discovery in a way to just be like, all right, let's get her to answer all these questions. I remember when I was deposed, it was interesting. I was in a car accident, as I've talked about. So simple deposition. I went to the like, AAA, you know, was that, like, I had to go to like the AAA insurance agency and meet with their lawyer. And they were asking me a bunch of questions. You know, I had a chronic neck injury. They were asking me how much my dog weighed. Do I pick my dog up? You know, things because they're trying to poke holes in my story to see if I was committing some form of insurance fraud. And as we realized, as soon as that deposition was over, they found me extremely credible because they tried to, you know, um, uh, they, they tried to settle that case right away. And then for the next probably 10 weeks they tried to settle the case and they just kept on racking the bill up because insurance agencies are essentially pond scum. They're the worst people in the world, um, right next to those that fake pregnancies. Um, you know, hand in hand, same type of people, just the worst. Well, the other type of deposition not just a court reporter, which costs a little bit more money, is a video deposition. You know, that's where you go, like you can go onto YouTube and just go like video deposition. So like I like to do David Portnoy, David Portnoy deposition here. And because he's, of course, the CEO of Barstool Sports, this is what you don't want. You don't want uh, to depose someone when they're on like the right side. So if Clayton gets deposed and he has proper answers for everything in the deposition. My guess is it could work against you. Here's David Portnoy, uh, and it's a clip that went viral, owning lawyers during a deposition. Have a watch. You recall your testimony earlier today that the picture that you came up with did all that after you terminated Mr. Um, Redfoot, correct? Correct. Isn't it true, sir, you actually had the picture ready to go and that you were just waiting to um, use something you could to justify your termination of Mr. Rappaport? No. Okay, I'm going to play for you a video. How long did it take you to come up with those clown shirts? Oh, that was instant. I think my three texts went in order. I fired the wrong Rappaport, <laughs> then I fired the real Rappaport, and then I said, well, or make this shirt. I was waiting for him to say something. The guy goes, when did you have the shirt? I go, three things happened. I fired the wrong Rappaport. I fired Mike Rappaport. I go, the third, one, two, three. The next text was to our t-shirt guy to get this shirt ready for when Mike Rappaport said something about me and escalate this because at this point he had it. That's when I put the shirt on set. So it's the exact opposite of what you insinuated. So this was just an example of a, of a lawsuit, a deposition where Dave Portnoy, because he was telling his truth, knew more than the lawyers. So if the lawyer, and again, if the lawyers come back and they want to grill Clayton about his whereabouts and his timeline, all he has to do is share his truth. And it'll actually probably work out better for him because he'll have long time to answer. Now, they can strike his answer. I guess they could uh, they could object to his answers, right? Uh, he'll probably have his lawyers there to object if they ask a line of questioning that's like out of the bounds or the scope of what it's supposed to be uh, and vice versa. Uh, but as far as what happened yesterday with Jane Doe's deposition, I'm going to report on that as soon as I have details. But I'll tell you right now, if you're wondering, hey Dave, it seems like this whole case is coming to an end. It can't get any stranger. I'm here to tell you this right now. Buckle up, okay? Buckle up because it's about to get buck wild and we will be here with 24 seven news coverage of this uh, as we approach trial. Because guess what, baby? Put it in the GPS. We're going to Maricopa County. Let's go. All right. Um, <laughs> we'll have more information as it comes. Again, patreon.com slash Dave Neal. I know you guys are already all over there. They eat first. Um, I think if we do get any information on this but tonight, I'll have it on there before YouTube just because I'm going to be away. It's a big day for us. We're signing and buying our new home today. So congratulations. And thanks to Denise. I saw you sent us a nice uh, house signing gift on Venmo. You guys are so sweet. Thanks again for all the love and support. We'll be back with more right after. I'll be live on Patreon actually right now. I'm going to go live and make this podcast right now.